Hi Librans, welcome to January 2019. Here we are and before we start our reading today I just want to send a toast with my spicy ginger beer. Don't worry, we're not partying it up. We're gonna stay focused here today, but I wanna send you a toast into this beautiful new year. I appreciate you, I appreciate your intellect, your joie de vivre, your nuance, and your ability to dive in deep on conversation. Um, I so appreciate you. So cheers to 2019. And with that, if you are interested in getting a little bit more of an overarching view of 2019, I do have Year Ahead Forecasts on Vimeo, so I'll leave the link directly below. You can click on that and you can uh, check out what I was doing there, which was big major aspects for 2019, what that means as far as theme for you and where you can find a lot of leverage and help. And we also pull some cards and feel through intuitively. It was really fun to do. So if you're interested, go check that out. And now let's focus on January 2019, because this is a really beautifully powerful month. Um, it's one of those months where we're starting to see that forward motion that was eluding us a little bit in 2018. 2018 was like, let's take two really profound steps forward and then take a step back and integrate. And that was kind of the patterning that was going on throughout the whole year. So while a lot was accomplished, it also felt a little bit holding us, right? But starting in January, we're starting to have these beautiful placements that propel us forward into the next phase, into the next thing. And for you guys, Capricorn season is always an interesting time. Um, it's a little bit more of this internal investigation. You know, Capricorn energy is very much about your internal home space and what's coming in for you there. I'll start shuffling here. Um, and then, of course, you know, once we get into January 20th, we're in Aquarius season, which lights you up and has a lot more flow and movement for you. So, however, the first week of 2019 is kind of powerful. Mars is starting a journey through Aries. So Mars is at home in your opposite sign of Aries, lighting up that relationship sector for you. So it's a very passionate energy. Some of you may find that that's a time when you're feeling the love. As I said that, I'm not kidding. I was about to just put it on the table, but the lovers came out as I said that. Yeah, partnership is big for you guys. And I think the partnerships that have to do with that internal space, the people that you do include in your, in your home environment are the ones that are kind of showing up right now. Um, so having Mars and Aries is kind of a beautiful thing for Librans. I think that feels really good. It gives you that counterbalancing energy. And you know, Mars at home and Aries, it feels good for all of us. It gives us that firepower. There's so much happening in that first week though. Sun and Saturn go conjunct in Capricorn in your fourth house energy. Mercury moves into Capricorn and Uranus goes direct in Aries. So Uranus started a retrograde in, the, in the last part of 2018 and visited Aries and now it's moving forward again and it's one of the last planets to really have retrograde action going on um, from 2018. So that first week we are starting to just move forward and we have a new moon in Capricorn as well. Emperor, wow, you guys are getting that Aries vibe, that partnership vibe, that balance vibe. You see what I'm saying there? Like even if you don't have a Gemini or an Aries in your life, these energies are reflective of that balancing partnership, connection, communication energy showing up for you. And it's really strong. Um, the note that I had for you, in fact, is transformations in home and love. There's a lot of firepower in creating spaces that work for you. And in those creating of those spaces, taking time to curate the space around you, taking the time to, you know, feel through what feels good in your home, what fits in your home, what feels beautiful in your home, is facilitating a huge amount of, ooh, the devil, wow. Capricorn season is upon us. So a huge amount of creative insight um downloads and making plans and like making big plans for the year you know whether that be travel plans moving plans uh, work plans this is a really great brainstorming month and that first week is the the first little inkling of it and then of course once Aquarius season starts on January 20th there's there's even more of this kind of you can start to really move on what you want to move on three of Pentacles fantastic 
because, you know, Aquarian energy, of course, fifth house heart energy for you guys. It helps move you through the world in a natural way that feels good for you, Librans. And then the, sec the, the day after we hit Aquarius season, we have this final lunar eclipse in Leo on the 21st. And, the, you know, the north node of the moon was in Leo for about a year and a half, and the south node was in Aquarius. And so all the eclipses were going on there for a good year and a half. This is the very last Leo lunar eclipse we're going to see for quite a while. Um, many, many years. So, and it is another one of these zero degree kind of powerful moons. Two cards are coming out. That's wild. Strength and the Three of Cups. And, you know, what's beautiful about this is Aquarian energy and Leonine energy are both really great for uh, Libran energy, right? Because Leo energy is all about your friendships and, like, your community and who you like being around, Wheel of Fortune. And Aquarian energy is all about your heart center. So these are beautiful energies for you. And I think there's that boost of feeling like you have people around you. You're connecting with people. Six of Pentacles. And also the Five of Pentacles snuck out. Okay, we're going to stop there with the cards and talk through these. Um, you know, focusing on those people that really support you, that really get you, that, and making those deeper connections. So... Let's talk through these cards because they're kind of amazing. Um, there's themes going on here, and I'm kind of looking at these in groups of three. So kind of how we're working through this month is the way that these cards came out for you, Librans, today. So, man, we are starting off with the, the, the strong players here in this reading. The lovers, the emperor, and the devil are powerful energies. They're powerful energies. And here's one thing that I'm seeing with you guys right away. What defines a healthy, happy partnership, right? Because we have these two cards that represent relationship, represent kind of soulmate, twin flame energy, right? And I don't like to use those words generally because I really do believe that we call in who we need at the time, and we are all working together all the time. We have really important partnerships where we learn a lot from each other. However, you know, this is that energy of somebody that you feel really connected to, somebody who really wakes you up and helps you see and, and is a mirror to you and helps you grow, right, in whatever way. And it's also, so it's those really profound relationships showing up right away for you. And I do think the first week of this month you are going to be feeling through what relationship means to you. And that, and that is regardless if you're married, if you're single, if you're kind of seeing somebody, if you're getting serious about somebody, there is something going on here with thinking about how you perceive that and value that, right? Because this is about freedom and communication. The lovers is about freedom, communication, balance, movement, air quality energy, right? And the devil is about partnership that's a little obsessive, a little grounded, a little bit more digging in and, and feeling resistance and feeling tied up and feeling tied down. And it, you know, and it, and it doesn't have the flow, right? It has the beautiful thing of you show up and you do the work, but it also has that sense of imprisonment. Now, when I get these two cards together like this, which does happen from time to time, I think I, I think I had a big talk with Aquarians actually last year when they were getting this kind of energy. It's a time where you are evaluating what works for you, what feels like freedom, what feels like flow, and what feels like imprisonment, and really questioning where you are writing yourself into imprisonment and where you are writing yourself out of an equation, what's feeling good to you in a relationship, what's feeling a little heavy. There's something going on here with needing to find balance there. And once again, you know, Mars in your opposite sign of Aries is going to be lighting this up all month. Uranus going direct in your opposite sign of Aries and finishing out that transit and moving back towards Taurus, which will take another two months, but that's all lighting up your relationship factor and saying, what, where do we want to find contentment? And because so much of this Capricorn energy is about your home environment and the energies that surround you in your space, you know, that's really important. You want energies that feel good to you. Now, some of you may, I mean, some of you may have a Gemini, an Aries, a Capricorn. All these energies are showing up, right, at the base of this reading. So maybe you have one of those energies in your life. What I will say is you have dominant energies in your life because, to be honest, the Emperor and the, and the Devil are pretty 
pretty intense energies. These are cardinal energies. They have their way of doing things. They want to make things happen. They want to move on everything all the time. You know, take a look at that as well. How are you communicating your needs? How are you communicating what you want? Um, the Emperor is a beautiful energy for you, I will say this. It's an initiating energy, and there's a lot of initiatory energy going on here for you. There's a lot of let's open this door and find out what's behind it. So the thing that I'm saying here, I think, the long and the short of it is, is there's an exploratory aspect. There's an investigative aspect going on with you in relationship the first half of this month. And I mean, throughout this month, I think this is going to be a theme for you that keeps coming up again and again. What works for you? What helps you feel inspired? And what does not? Um, now, this is what's really cool. As we kind of head towards that lunar eclipse in Leo, we head toward Aquarius season, I'm seeing something to do with community, right? Three of Pentacles, Strength, and Three of Cups. This is beautiful. And this doesn't have so much to do with those one-on-one -on -one relationships. This has a lot more to do with the people around you and the community around you and feeling that you have a whole world of support with you to work through this next phase. Now, like I was saying, the note that I had for you guys was all about how this energy, this time of year for you, the beginning of this year especially, is a time of making plans, making plans with your community, with, with the people you love, getting closer with that, feeling held in that, really getting to see and make plans and visions for what you do in the world, where you want to travel in the world, what you want to build with your relationships, and that's all showing up here. Threes are numbers of flow. Three is a number of flow. And these three are especially flowing. This is all about shared vision, and this is all about jubilation and celebration. So there's something to celebrate here. There's something flowing and working for you. Now, it may involve a Leo. You know, Leo energy and Libra energy works very well together. There's a lot of understanding there. There's a lot of sociability. There's a lot of uh, playfulness that Leos and Librans share. I'm a Leo and I definitely always have fun playing with you guys and talking. Uh, and the thing that's interesting about the strength card though, in the midst of this conversation with these threes that are all about the universe is supporting you on these, these plans. The universe is supporting you on these goals. You don't have to feel that you have to stop yourself from daydreaming about them. Stop yourself from believing this is possible. Because I think sometimes you self-protect a little bit and you start to dream about it and then you say, mm, but maybe not, maybe not this year. The strength card is saying pace yourself, right? So first of all, believe that you can do this stuff. Start trusting things that are showing up, the people that are showing up, because people are showing up, connections are showing up. There is something going on here with you making and networking and, and talking and communicating and doing some really cool projects. The strength card is always kind of the pace yourself energy though. It's like, this is a marathon, right? 2019 is a powerful year of new beginnings. People are talking about three. It's a three year. It's a catalyst year. Um, a lot of things are just moving and rushing forward, which means that you need to make sure that you remember that not all of this has to get done in January, that a lot of the things, some of these things that you plan aren't going to happen until September, October. Some of these things will happen in May, you know, some of these things will happen in February. However, the strength card is always that reminder that you have the lion. You can use the lion, but people just need to see that it's there. And you can remember that you don't have to unleash everything, all of your energy, have it all figured out right out of the gate. That you can kind of hold yourself, make a plan, and then hold back a little bit. Reassess, check in, does that feel good? Give yourself some rest and some recuperation because there's so much you're going to want to do. I mean, that's the thing. The energy is going to be so supportive of you, and it really is. And it's very catalytic. You know, it's like lighting all these little, um, these candles and these fires and these flames and, and waking stuff up and, and then just wanting to like stay up all night and keep going and make it all happen and have all the answers. Cause once it gets started, it's so exciting. It's so exciting. It's that feeling of like getting into bed and be like, I can't wait to wake up in the morning. Cause I have so much I want to do. <sighs> Take a breath. Like even sitting here right now, I'm getting kind of like hyperactive <laughs> talking to you guys. So just remember, there's a big process working at you. And because you're getting those downloads, it's going to feel like it's supposed to all happen in the next six weeks. It's supposed to happen over time and unfold. And that's the, really where the good stuff is. 
Now, the top three cards are getting a little philosophical about self-value as you move into new territory in life. And so let's talk about it because it's pretty interesting the way that that, that, that five of pentacles snuck in there. Um, so we have the world, the, or the wheel of fortune, I'm sorry, the six of pentacles and the five of pentacles. Um, and I think this, this is kind of, these are the three levels. Um, I think you can kind of see how like this is the most obvious in your face. This is kind of the middle ground. And this is kind of the subconscious layer that maybe sometimes we don't even recognize as talk, giving us some whispering in our ear a little bit and affecting us a little bit. So think about it in those ways. The Wheel of Fortune is, to me, a lot about how you're going to feel about January and feel through January, which is this sense of shift. You know, it's the gears turning. If you think about a giant clock uh, and it's striking, you know, a new hour and those gears click and suddenly you're in a new, you're in a new hour. Um, and this is not about, you know, so much like timeline and goals as it is that sense that something has clicked, that the pieces have changed, that people have left your life, that situations have left your life, that certain love has left your life, that certain um, identities have left your life completely. There is a graduation sense with Wheel of Fortune, and there's also that surprise element of it's time for the, that wheel to turn. It's time for you to step into some new shoes, which is a dominant theme for you in January. Not just because it's the beginning of the new year, but because you have firepower in your relationships, because you have some work going on in your fourth and your fifth houses, because Aquarian season is all about you opening up your heart and being creative and, and creating new things, you have a lot of energy saying, okay, it's time to fully commit to this. And on the one hand, you have all this balance, right? This is a reminder for you guys to, as you know, give, love, share, and also take time for yourself. Find that balance. And where you are feeling an imbalance, where you are feeling a lack of reciprocity or groundedness, once again, relationships are a big theme for you and what's a healthy relationship, what, what are healthy connections and what doesn't feel like it's serving you as well. Those are big themes coming up for you. So this is a calibration card and it will come back time and time again and ask you, is this balanced? Is this healthy? And this is a healthy place to kind of assess, right? It's, it's a really um, pragmatic energy. Six of Pentacles is very much about how can we balance this? out so that it works. Underneath all this newness though and these new patterns because it is about to you guys about leaving behind old patterns when it comes to how you value yourself in your connections, how you value yourself in your community, how you value yourself in the work you do in the world when if when and if you let yourself fully engage with it. Underneath that we do have this subtle little reminder because all these cards are so beautiful you guys I mean I have to say you have beautiful energy this month. The five of pentacles is just a reminder. Where do you stop yourself? It's really sneaky energy. Five of pentacles is one of the sneakiest energies. Sometimes it's really obvious we feel we feel less than we feel undeserving we feel cut off. But a lot of times five of pentacles is just that moment where we say "Ooh, I'd really love to do that trip. Oh, I can't do it. In that moment where we just say that. So it's really important for you to just notice when this comes up. Remember, remember your strength. Remember that you can, you can come up with ways to make things work. You can come up with ways to move into new territory. This is a month of re-scrambling all that old wiring. This is a great month for you guys. Um, if you are into EFT or any kind of like uh, energy rewiring, kind of physical and mental and emotional rewiring work, this is a great month to do that. If you have an old pattern you want to get kind of reset um, to channel into a new healthier way when it comes to relationship or work or self-value, this is a great month to do that. Um, I am going to give you guys a little affirmation for January that I wrote just for you guys thinking of you before we even open this reading. Here it is. Take this with you. Be gentle and soft with yourself in January. The road opens before me with clarity and precision. Projects and ideas flow through me with ease. I think that's the thing. You know, um, you're going to have a lot of energy coming at you. You're going to have a lot of ideas coming to you. You are going to feel a little bit like you could have all the burners on your stove turned on and you're stirring and you're running around. 
just taking that moment to breathe and remember that the ideas and the processes are going to flow through you easily. The right next step is going to flow through easily and make sense. If we just take that moment to breathe and trust a little bit. And with that, I'm going to close out this beautiful reading, Librans. Um, I hope you have a gorgeous beginning to this new year. I love you so much. Check out my uh, year ahead readings. Um, we have a lot of fun stuff coming up for the new year. I'm really excited to share with you. There will be classes. There will be connections going on in different locations. There will be events going on. And of course, you can always find me here. Um, I will see you guys for February. And it's, you know, it's going to be an exciting year ahead. I'm sending you all my love. And, oh, yes. And, of course, follow me on Instagram at Tolesaratero. And I will leave my website and my email below if you'd like to do a private reading. I'm booking in April right now. So I'd love to see you in April and uh, hear from you if you have any questions. So you can find all that info below. And I will see you very soon.